Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of OK Zoomer. I'm your host, Aaron Lichtig, Zometry Guy and former Jeopardy! champion. And I'm here today with Filipos Volpiotis. He is the chief business officer of 3D Natives. Now, Filipos, after his studies in the Netherlands and the UK, he joined 3D Natives in Paris. Um, and he's worked there for a few years, and he's also an advisor to a venture capital firm in New York and the founder of the Young Leaders of Monaco. So, Filipos, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, Aaron. Thanks so much for having me. Excellent. Well, first, tell us about your work at 3D Natives. Sure. Well, as you said, I'm uh, the, biz- the Chief Business Officer of 3D Natives. Uh, for those of you who might not be familiar, 3D Natives is basically the largest media on 3D printing. So we've been around for seven years now or so, basically covering everything in regards to additive manufacturing. So you can see it yourself just by visiting our website, 3dnatives.com, you'll see that uh, we have all sorts of articles, interviews, um, rankings and so on as well as webinars videos we've actually diversified our model over the years where now it includes an events page a job board everything 3d printing specific as well as a 3d printing uh, comparison engine and uh, we're also working on consulting for 3d printing as well as well (laughs) since uh, since march now of 2020 we've also been working on uh, virtual events Excellent. And you just had a virtual event last week, Additive Digital World. That's right. Yeah, we had the... Uh, that's why you see me smiling, because I, I got to sleep again after a while. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, as you said, Additive Digital World was uh, last week, basically our fourth installment of uh, virtual AM uh, events for, for this year. We started back in March with uh, DAM as uh, some of your viewers might have attended, the Digital Additive Manufacturing Marathon, basically the first ever virtual 3D printing trade show. And uh, then we, soon after that, we launched our very own events brand, Additive, without an E in the end. And we had a, a, a virtual event specific to the French market in June, and then another one specific to the Spanish market in September. And as you said, last week, we had our world edition, the international event, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. So, um, how did you get into 3d printing and to 3d natives? Good question. Um, well, actually I, I had like my studies, I had no relation to 3d printing. I did international business and economics, and then I was working, um, uh, in the, in the UK, uh, and I just knew I wasn't in the technology sector. Uh, I was in the tourism and leisure sector and it just, it hit me that I definitely need to be working with uh, tech and especially new tech because it has always been fascinating to myself. And um, I remember deciding that, okay, I'm going to switch from the UK and I'm going to move to France. Paris is notorious for its amazing startup ecosystem. And I just wanted to find a startup in the, in the new tech sector. And that's when I bumped onto 3D Natives, uh, who at the time was um, leading in certain countries, but still with just so much potential ahead of it. And I remember discussing with our CEO, Alex, and uh, just from our very first chat, it was obvious that we're, this is an industry that just has so much potential moving forward. 3D Natives in particular was and is in such a uh, significant position, you know, the, of, uh, of potential expansion and growth and so on, where I, I just from the very beginning, I remember it was it just the moment I bumped onto 3D Natives, I thought to myself, okay, that's like, that's my number one target. I need to get into that. And uh, obviously a few years later, here we are. So in your role at 3D Natives, you get to talk to a lot of people in the 3D printing ecosystem, engineers, people working on the machine side, service bureaus. What are some of the the trends or commonalities you see in the industry today? Well, as you said, I am blessed because as 3D Natives, we get the chance to pretty much work and speak with everyone in the supply chain of AM. So anyone really from the chemical companies producing their own materials to the machine manufacturers, the 
the resellers, distributors, the service bureau, the users themselves. So this allows us to have a better understanding from time to time of just the overall market and so on, as well as of course, following the latest trends. Um, your question, does it refer mainly to the technology trends or the overall market and how it goes? Um, either, or, either or. So in terms of the technologies and so on, there's just so much going on at all times, despite of the pandemic, like uh, just the, the material development we see, let's say in metal powders is phenomenal and the overall growth of metal, as well as like new families like composites and so on, which we've seen like the growth they've had over the past couple of years, like high performance polymers, how they're used more and more in the aerospace sector and, and so on. But at the same time, I think since the large wave of, um, uh, of the patent, uh, expire, patents expiring uh, not so long ago, mm -hmm. there's just been a, 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 a space in the market for just tremendous competition where we see more and more companies just entering with a whole new concept of technologies. And I think we see that now with uh, certain companies just growing at a very fast rate. For example, not so long ago, uh, like a couple of months ago, desktop metal, like, uh, you know, going public with a 2.5 billion USD uh, valuation. I think it's just a prime example of uh, how something like that can nowadays go a long way over like the, you know, three, five years uh, since that. Now, as for the market itself, and not so much the technologies and the materials, etc., obviously the number one thing that everyone has to deal with is the, how we handle the pandemic. It's, very, it's a very different and new way of doing business in 2020. Not, I don't think anyone could have predicted how different this year would have been. So from our perspective, what we see is that there is, due to the cancellation or postponement of the of the physical trade shows that we're used to and let's be honest 3d printing you know it's a very cool and fun uh, trendy word but at the end of the day it's still manufacturing it is still highly dependent on the physical trade shows where people can go see each other you know to see the machine the final part the, like the tangible object and so on yeah. uh which has been the case honestly since the ancient years and now when you take an industry like ours and you just take that away completely, um, there has been a massive demand, okay, how can we cover that gap? Because as you can imagine, 3D printing companies, they need to be able to, to find people who are potentially interested in purchasing their machinery. They can start the sales cycle. They can, you know, they can have that communication with their end users and so on. So I think this is like one of the primary uh, challenges of 2020. And what I see is just much like with other industries, just a massive, massive scale of uh, digital transformation where companies that weren't used to, to do things digitally, uh, you know, have jumped onto the internet and has started producing content through webinars, have started uh, trying to approach uh, potential buyers through virtual events and uh, other means. What advice would you have for somebody who wants to learn more about additive manufacturing? Ah, do it. <laughs> additive manufacturing is cool, man. I mean, I'm obviously biased because I'm in the industry, but let's be honest. Additive manufacturing is just a family of tens of technologies by now. Uh, it would have been a totally different conversation 20 years ago or so, but now I think we're at the, at the point where we can see that it, 3D printing is or is about to disrupt just such a massive variety of different industries. And currently, perhaps we see it more with the aerospace and the medical and the automotive sectors. But honestly, tomorrow, construction and um, uh, bioprinting, uh, you know, they can change just so, so many different things. So uh, if you, if you're lucky enough, I guess, in a way to have been exposed to additive manufacturing, do your research online because there are amazing, uh, ama amazing pieces to, to study. Uh, obviously, you can go on 3D Natives and find all sorts of guides where you can learn more about specific technologies or so, but also general research and reach out to people as well. Like the 3D printing community 
is not that massive yet. So you, you have the chance to speak with certain experts that are just tremendously knowledgeable and tend to be quite open and happy to discuss. So, yeah. Yeah, this is a very friendly community and uh, a lot of people are open to chatting. Now, as you look at the future of additive manufacturing, looking out one year, three years, or even five years, what are some of the things that you're most excited about? Ooh, so much. Um, well, I mean, one thing that's definitely interesting and it is already happening, but especially in the short run, we'll see more and more change is how to basically analyzing how big OEMs, original equipment manufacturing companies uh, uh, can uh, take advantage of additive manufacturing that perhaps is a technology that they, they use for the first time because they have been, you know, usually uh, used the um, uh, other technologies like injection molding or machining and so on. And now they are sort of like expanding their portfolio into additive manufacturing. I have to admit, I have a bit of a thing for aerospace. I am very uh, intrigued with how they use AM and just projects like relativity space. I don't know whether you, you've seen, but like uh, 3D printing metal rockets is just a completely new project and it's happening today. Uh, so in the next three to five years, God knows where we might be. Um, and uh, I would say all in all, the, the overall development of all three stages of manufacturing, design for additive manufacturing is changing rapidly. And the way this happens uh, influences the whole journey of how a part is produced. So it is amazing, especially considering how different, fundamentally different it is from all sorts of design uh, softwares we had up until now. The manufacturing itself, it just has more and more of a variety of different technologies as well as materials that can be handled, like the families of metals five years ago and today it's a complete different story. And uh, I can see easily that happening with high performance polymer printers that are now you know, more and more available in the market with composites, how we have carbon fiber reinforced uh, um, plastics and it's you know in polymers it's just tremendously interesting what can happen as well as the post-processing the third stage which again can be such a driving factor about the decision making of whether a company will use 3d printing or not so honestly there's just in all fronts there's just exciting time exciting things coming yeah, the aerospace applications are tremendous. We did an interview a, a couple of months ago with an engineer, Eliana Fu, at Relativity mm. Space. And she had some fascinating things to say about their work. Well, Filipos, thank you for joining today. Uh, it was great to have you thanks uh, so on much. the show. Likewise, thanks so much for the time, Aaron. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for watching this episode of OK Zoomer. We'll be back in a couple of days with another one. Take care, everybody. Cheers.